Yo, what's up, everybody? My name is Tim Davis. Some of y'all might know me as Time, the inner mind's eye. Time is infinite. But my name is Tim Davis. I have something to say. And I'd appreciate it if you took the time out of your day to sit down and listen to what I'm saying. And it might take a while. Because I got a story to tell. In 2018, I was living at my parents' house. Yeah, I was going through some shit, but that's that's not what we're here for today. You have to know that my parents live in a very rural part of the countryside. It's about 10 miles in north, south, east, west to any of the closest cities in their area. If you don't know it's there, you're not going to know it's there. You, you get what I'm saying? All right, good. I've been going on walks, daily walks, as I imagine lots of you people do. One day, I turn a corner and I'm at the top of the hill. Same path I've always gone. Except this time at the bottom of the hill, there's a cop car. A law enforcement squad car. And I say, immediately, something's not right. I've never seen a law enforcement squad car in this neighborhood. And they've been living out in that area for eight, nine years. Now, I'm light-skinned. I am a black man. The moment I saw that cop car, that squad car, whatever you want to call it, immediately said, I have to be cautious of what's going on right now. And no sooner had I said that, that car started moving towards me. Immediately, I got my hands like this. One car turned into three cars. Six officers got out of those three cars with weapons, shotguns, assault rifles. Pointing them at me in my own neighborhood, less than a thousand feet from my parents' front doorstep. They start yelling at me, get the fuck back in your house. Get the fuck back in your house or we will arrest you for failure to comply with the law. I'm sitting here, yo, I'm walking home. I live in the back of this neighborhood. I have to walk on this path to get back to the neighborhood. I'm walking home now. It's like they didn't even hear me. They just kept saying it. Get the fuck back in your house or we will arrest you for failure to comply. I, I move slow. Because I know I can't make any sudden movements. I can't just take off running. So, slowly and with purpose, I turn around. You know, I keep looking over my shoulder because I don't want to get shot in the back. And if these police officers decide to start shooting at me, I, I would like to see it coming first. Maybe that would help me survive. As I start walking home, another car pulls up, almost hits me. As I, I jumped out of the way and two more officers, two more officers get out of this car with their weapons drawn, pointed at me, telling me, get the fuck back in your house or we will arrest you for failure to comply and resisting arrest. At that moment, I want to say the world froze. 
But things happen very quickly for me. In that moment, I said in my mind, oh shit, this is it. I wasn't scared. It was just kind of like I felt the breeze blow. Makes sense? I don't know. I said, this is it. I'm about to get shot up. Filled with, filled with slugs and shells. Less than a thousand feet from my parents' front door. I'm about to die. In a pool of my own blood. Not of my own volition. But because these officers want to kill me. I prayed. I'm not a I'm not a religious guy. I prayed though. I prayed to my ancestors. I prayed to all the gods that I could think of in that moment. I prayed to superheroes from Goku to Superman, whatever. I started hoping Hoping that I could get home and see my dad. Hoping that I could get home and play with my dog one more time. Hoping that I could hear my mother's voice again. Because she wasn't home. She was out of state taking care of family business. So I'm also hoping that my mom doesn't return home to me dead. And I keep walking home. Now, I can feel this tension. It's like an electric thickness on my head. I felt like my head was in the scope. I knew, okay, that if anything happens wrong, bullets are going to start flying. And I keep walking home. Meanwhile, still getting yelled at the whole time. Get the fuck back in your house. Or we, you will get arrested for failure to comply and resisting arrest. But I keep walking home. And eventually, I made it. I made it home. And I'm lucky that I made it home. Because George Floyd didn't get to go home. Philando Castile didn't get to go home. Sean Bell did not get to go home. Ahmed Aubrey, who is out doing the same thing that I was doing, going for a run in his parents' neighborhood. Didn't get to go home. Is that because I'm light-skinned? I don't know. Was it because fortune was smiling on me that day? I don't know. I don't know. Now, that's my story. I made it home. That's my story. Every time something happens and a black man is killed by police officers, it's not projection. It's me saying... I was literally in that situation and I made it home. It's not imagination of maybe that could happen to me. It's I was in that situation and I made it home. And I count my blessings for me being able to get home because I know that there are hundreds of people that we know about that didn't make it home and more that we don't know that didn't make it home.
what's gone on the last week in this country is crazy. But it's not crazy. People are out here protesting. People are out here rioting. And that's not crazy. Riots are the language of the unheard. And we have failed to be heard. We have been failed by this country. And that's why we are angry. That's why we are rioting. Point blank period. I hear people say, well, I'm scared to go outside because you're rioting. You're not supposed to be going outside like that anyway. We're dealing with coronavirus. My grandma died from coronavirus. The healthiest person I know back home in North Carolina has coronavirus. This is somebody who works out often trying to get stronger who stays in shape by, by running and taking care of his body and eating the proper foods. And he has coronavirus. If it can happen to him, I'm convinced it can happen to anybody because viruses don't discriminate. <laughs> so stay your ass at home. Don't come outside. Don't go into riot don't go out into coronavirus. I'm not trying to propagate fear. I'm telling you, whoever's watching this video, what's real to me through people that I love and know in real life. People that I have shook hands with, hugged, hung out with, played video games with, family members who I love who have died. But that's aside from the point. People are saying that they're scared to go outside because of these riots. They're scared to they are scared to live their lives because people are rioting outside. We are rioting because we live not with fear, but with knowledge that any time we go outside. We might not make it home that day. I, li I said some names earlier. George Floyd, Ahmed Aubrey, Sean Bell, Philando Castile. Let's add Alton Sterling to that list. There's a whole long list, and I can't name all of them. These were people who were going about their daily life. Much like you're saying you want to go about your daily life. Who were killed. Not from rioting protesters but by law enforcement officials. There's a big difference. A big difference. Earlier this week, I made a post on social media where I said, all police officers are cowards. Immediately afterwards, I got a message from somebody that I went to school with, middle school and high school, who is now a police officer. And I'm not putting anybody's name out there in any of these scenarios. And he said, hey, man, I want you to know that when this shit happens, when a black person is unjustly murdered by the police officer, I think of you because I know you and I see your face, not theirs. He says, oh, my God. That could have been Tim Davis in every single one of these situations. And I know this dude. It's a friend of mine. We're not best friends. We only hung out a few times. But this is somebody who I can say 
is a good person. And to that man, I want to say thank you because he also told me that he is doing the best that he can day in and day out to make sure that his community is safe for everybody, regardless of race, nation, or creed. So to that man, thank you. I was also contacted by a young man who has similar hopes and dreams and aspirations as I do. And he said, hey man, I can't sit here and let you call all police officers cowards because my dad is a police officer. I have uncles who are police officers and they are not cowards. They are doing the right thing. They are trying to make sure that their communities are safe. And I told both of these men, I'm glad that your community's safe, but that's your community. What about the rest of the nation? The conversations went on and words were exchanged and there was no bad, you know, finger pointing or name calling or anything like that. These were people who were saying, hey, man, I see you. I understand your frustration. I really do. Please know that I see that. But please also know that not all police officers are bad people. Okay. Now, before I go on, there's people on both sides of the fence here. There, there's people who will look at me and they will say, look at him. He light skinned. He ain't even black, bro. He said there's some good cops out there, man. Yo, he a coon, bro. He a sellout. He a jigaboo. He, he ain't black. Fuck that guy. All right. All right. Cool. I'll accept that. Matter of fact, fuck that. I don't accept that. There's people on another side. The people who say, well, it's police officers. You should have complied. Who's going to look at me and say, I said, fuck the police. I said, all police are cowards. Well, then he's obviously a thug criminal who's up to no good. Only thing I got on my record is a DUI. I watched Killer Mike speak last night. Killer Mike, the rapper, very pro black. He said, I've got family members who have chosen a career in law enforcement. He said, I have respect for people who wear the badge all the way down to the original eight black police officers who were forced to wear YMCA uniforms instead of police uniforms because they're white Caucasian co-workers said, I'm not wearing the same uniform as niggers. Just think about that for a second. Just think about that for a second. Now, my, my friend, the one who has similar hopes and aspirations and dreams as I do, He's telling me, hey, man, not all cops are bad cops. And you know what? That's true. But in this situation, honestly, because this is not about being fair. This is about being honest. One bad apple spoils the whole bunch. 
That's how I look at it. That's how millions of people across the nation and on this planet look at it. Because that's how it is. There's no other way to put it, man. But I will admit, because this is about being honest, that there are good police officers. So to those good police officers, like the black man who is standing there with the people and he said, hey, I went and told my co-workers to shut the fuck up with what they were saying over a loudspeaker because you have a right to be here. You have a right to protest. You have a right to be angry. That's a good cop. Because he's standing up for the people in the face of his own co-workers. So salute to that man. Respect that man. Respect to the other police officer who went and talked to the people saying, hey, let's all get home safe tonight. Let's not hurt anybody. Please protest. But that man was then taken away from the people that he was talking to, providing comfort and re relief for by his own co-workers. I just named two good cops, but that was undone by other police in that area because they took one of those men away from the people and said, hey, you can't do that. And that's why I say fuck the police. And if you need any further clarification, when I say fuck the police, yes, it does include all police officers, regardless if they're good cops, bad cops, or anything in between. Because it's bigger than good cop, bad cop. This is about an establishment, a corporation, a system, a network that was founded on bigotry, racism, oppression, and hatred. Look it up. The police evolved from what was called the slave patrols. The motto to serve and protect originally was to serve and protect the plantation. Just think about that. I'm not asking you to relate to it. I'm asking you to think about that. Just t take it in your mind for just a few seconds. Okay? This shit has to stop. People looking at the at people who are protesting and rioting saying, well, that's no good. Well, we took knees with Colin Kaepernick. People marched with Martin Luther, Martin Luther King in the 1950s. That was 70 years ago. You tell us to be patient. That was 70 years ago. We need change today. Okay? People are saying, I'm scared to go outside. There was a black woman, a nurse, taking care of coronavirus patients on the front lines who was murdered in her bedroom. While she was asleep. Think about that. To the good police, to the good people 
who have chosen law enforcement as a career. And I have I have friends aside from the man I mentioned earlier who work for police departments, work for sheriff departments, black, white, Hispanic, Asian, work higher up in different forms of uh, federal government law enforcement, people who work security jobs. And they know how I feel when I say fuck the police. But to those good people, please hold your co-workers to higher standards because that's what law enforcement officials are supposed to be, a higher standard. Who do I call when police got their guns pointed at me? I can't call the police. If I reach for my phone, I'm getting shot the fuck up. I'm dying. So who do I call? When the police are the ones that have their weapons pointed at me. When the police are the ones that are doing me wrong. For taking a walk in my parents' neighborhood. Please hold your co-workers to a higher standard. Regular citizens of the United States hold police officers to a higher standard. Because these officers are supposed to be a higher standard. And as such, unpopular opinion, I don't care. Since they're held to a higher standard... They need harsher punishments. If it was up to me, these police officers who murdered innocent people would be commanded to commit seppuku, ritualistic taking of one's own life, taking a sharp blade, cutting across your stomach, Bleeding out and then having someone chop off your head. Because you have no honor. You have disgraced yourself to the point that the only honorable thing that you can do is end your own life. I'm not out for blood. I want freedom, justice, equality. That's it. And until a black person can go outside And not get killed for doing everything right. One more time. For doing everything right. There is no justice. There is no freedom. There is no equality. So please. Please make the change. Be the peace. I'm asking. I am also demanding. I'm not going out to riot. I'm not going out to loot. I'm at home. Where I still don't feel safe. And I wish that I was making that up. Be the change. Be the peace. Because I can't. None of us can.
That's all I got to say. If you watched this far, thank you. Hopefully, you're going to sit there and think about the things that I've just said, the experiences that I've just shared, the opinions that I've got. I'm not asking you to agree with me when I say fuck the police. I do want to say, put yourself in my shoes the next time you go out for a run. Take a hundred steps or so, maybe a little more. And imagine that now you have eight officers standing with their guns drawn pointed at you. It's not something that you can imagine, is it? And that's the problem. This shit is real. This shit happens every day. I'm one of the lucky ones. And there are so, so many who are not lucky like I was.